this side? Yeah. Sure. I'll do this side and this side. Yeah, you do this side also. Okay. Well, hey guys, welcome to Homestead. I am Jeff, the Homestead Dad. And as you can see, I just opened up the high tunnel and I'm sitting down here. I'm not gonna do any work in here right now, but I just wanna do a quick video. So obviously the high tunnel's up. Uh, and if you guys have seen the two previous videos, we did a video on the installation and then we did a video on um, how you can get a high tunnel. In addition to that, after we installed this, I sat down with the owner and founder of Nifty Hoops, Jeff McCabe, and we just sat and talked for I don't know, about 15 minutes. And it was kind of funny when I was going to edit it, I didn't have to edit it. I just let it play. We just It was just a casual conversation where we talked about high tunnels, how he got started, how he got to the, the model he's at now with regards to uh, what we did, which is the community build, um, where he sees the high tunnel kind of industry going in the future with his company and just um, food security. You know, obviously there's been stuff going on with COVID that people are more interested in, in uh, growing some of their own food. And something like this, even in Michigan, where we have pretty harsh winters, uh, I'll be able to grow through the winter. So this is, this is pretty important to me. Um, and it's important to him too. So if you're interested, it's a great conversation. It's about 15 minutes, um, touch on a whole different host of topics about uh, high tunnels, their use, all that stuff. Uh, please check it out. If, uh, if you aren't already a subscriber, please go ahead and hit on that subscribe button. Uh, hit the bell notification so you don't miss any videos that are coming up. And uh, leave a thumbs up and a comment. Uh, let me know how you found the video. I'd really appreciate that. It helps out the channel and uh, I appreciate it very much. So with no further ado, here's my conversation with Jeff McCabe. Okay, so at the end of a long day, actually not that long a day, and we've got this beautiful hoop house, high tunnel in the background, and here's the man behind the whole plan, Jeff McCabe. So Jeff, tell me how you got to where you are right now. Like, wh what led you to be the guy who's got one of the best high tunnels out there and you're installing them for people? Mm. Well, it's the, a long story that uh, I try to get into a few words. First of all, I just want to say what a pleasure it was to be out here today. Our pleasure. Your as people well. are so amazing. And it's got, really fun to see what you're doing. And I got good friends. This inspires me because the reason I'm doing it, I guess, is really the thing that I want to, you know, emphasize the most: the why, more than like how did we get here. And it's that I just got really turned on by people that want to grow food. You know, growing for market, growing for themselves, whatever. I'm seeing that hoop houses are just a technology that is so important to us eating every day of the year. Yeah. You know, we can do a little bit of stuff that stores through the winter, but it's really nice to get some chlorophyll, you know, get some nice green, fresh food right through the winter. And these things grow spinach and other cold hardy crops so well that they really complement what people are doing out in their out in their field, you know. So that's why we're doing it. We saw that this is something that's gonna really change the food system and Hoop houses were kind of a struggle to put up. We know that because we started off as a bunch of volunteers through this little Selma Cafe project, getting people together, eat some food, put some money in the jar, you know, donation kind of thing, and then go out and take that money and build hoop houses for farmers. Yeah. That was the evolution. We were putting up other structures that were really hard to put up. It was really hard to build a hoop house in a day with those, especially the end wall design. You just got a pile of steel. And you had to figure out how to do a lot of measure mark and kind yeah. of even even the like I wonder what we should do, you know, was was a lot of the time frame when pretty pretty much you're going to do the same thing every time if you want a door and a louver to ventilate that kind of stuff. Right. So eventually, I just decided to do my own design, and I was doing all this volunteer work, you know, for a long time, and kind of 
ended my remodeling business and thought I better figure out a way to prove a livelihood for myself here as well. Yeah. So eventually got this company up and running, started manufacturing our own structure and putting it up. That's the, about the briefest way I can put yeah. it. Yeah, and it, I mean, to put it up, it was a lot of, it was fun. Uh, for me, anyway, it was fun because, like you said, there wasn't we weren't we weren't having to reinvent the wheel. We were putting things together and went together in a very succinct way. The end walls went together in a very succinct way, um, and everything had a place, and there was a place for everything. So, it, like you said, it wasn't a whole lot of fooling around. It was putting a, a high tunnel up, and we got a thirty by seventy-two foot high tunnel up, and you know, what seven hours? Something like that. Something like yeah. that, and yeah. with plenty of water breaks. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, nice a nice lunch, thank you. Yeah, a nice I've, breakfast and a nice lunch, thank I, you. Hey, I got to pay and people plenty of water. Time, right? <laughs> so, yeah, no, um we really have kind of three models right now of how the labor can go into this. We can come out with our crew and you know, almost this kind of stand back nifty hoops is here, you know, we'll yeah. hand you the keys when we're done kind of thing. Right. And we could do a, a version of it where there's the least amount that we put in where maybe you and I would just work for about 5 hours get the posts in, get a little bit started, build a couple bows and say like, you kind of got it, right? You can watch the videos, you can yeah. figure it out and you could take your month of Sundays or whatever you wanted to to finish it up. But really those two, both of those two models I just described are really becoming l much less used than what we did today. Yeah. We brought two people out, we're charging you for 16 hours of our time yep. and you know, that's what we need to, Yep. More than that, yeah. frankly, with the loading up and all the yeah. things we do. But, you know, we, we end up spending seven, eight hours out here on site and um, with two people. And that's enough to get the whole thing done. We don't have to bring the whole crew out and charge you a couple thousand dollars more. Right. And we don't want you to be struggling through all those steps of like, I wonder what's next, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So really, yeah, it's a way to energize the community, get it done with very little labor costs on your part. And it's really fun for us, too. I mean, yeah. We just find that this is so fun to come out and meet new people see what they're doing and, yeah. and really get energized over and over again yeah. so. and i have to say like the videos that you guys have on your website are super helpful so like if someone wanted to do this themselves and spend their month of sundays they could do it with the videos and the instruction that you guys have on your on your website it's, yeah i mean it's that's pretty comprehensive that's the idea is that at least it's going to give you everything you need to follow up and finish a hoop house if you wanted to do it with that starter build model so we have yeah. the starter builds just about five hours of our time yep community build you're getting about 16 hours of our time full yep. install might be closer to 30 40 hours of yeah. our time or more yeah. you know it depends on the size of the structure right. for sure um and yeah i mean you know Hopefully it does about three things. One, we can have our crews, when we get new people in, study those and be a little bit better coming out the door. Right. It's good for somebody finishing a nifty hoop. And we hope it's enough like just building any hoop house that it's helpful. It, it, it's going to tell anybody who wants to be out here doing this a little bit of kind of the nice little cheaters and, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, life hack sort of things that make it a lot easier to build a hoop house, yeah. anybody's hoop house. So. Yeah, absolutely. And you guys install all over the Midwest, the Northeast. It sounds like if there's anybody who's watching this within reason, you guys will, you know, find a way to come out and, and help somebody out. Well, we would be nationwide right now if COVID hadn't hit us. Okay. Um, we, uh, we were down in Arizona building uh, three big hoop houses when it hit. Wow. And, you know, we kind of wondered if we were just going to hole up in this really beautiful little yeah. resort. And... Not a bad place to hole up, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, but uh, I would be out on the West Coast right now um, and get, you know, starting to even work toward getting manufacturing set up out there. This knocked us back a bit and yeah. we're going to, you know, retract back in a little bit to what we were doing before, which, you know, up until then, I should say, yeah. which, which is basically east of the Rockies kind of thing. So we're all over uh, the South. We've been down into, especially like down in North Carolina okay. and Tennessee quite a bit we seem to get out to new york and uh rhode island seems to be really come up a lot lately yeah. uh, but really michigan southeast michigan the most concentration all up through michigan up into the up a mm -hmm. lot and indiana seems to just really be getting on board lately and we get down in there a lot so awesome. that's really where most of the hoop houses yeah. we build are so but if somebody's watching this video a year from now there's a possibility you might be back in the west coast and nationwide yeah, I mean, I've got family out there. I'm getting to where I want to 
kind of make a transition yeah. and be next to my kids and my grandkids oh, a little yeah. bit more. Family's important. Um, et cetera. And so I'll be out there part of the time and I will gear up a certain amount of production. How we phase up again yeah. uh, will depend on different factors, but absolutely. We're, we're starting to network more with people who have, you know, you, you have a worldwide presence, obviously, with what you're doing. And there's a lot of farm consultants that have a pretty big national footprint and that kind of thing. You know, we're, we're getting so many more calls from all over. Yeah. It doesn't make sense for us to get this exposure and have to tell, have to spend so much of our time and your time telling, telling you no. Yeah. We better get to where we can get out there and, and do this. So this this community build model will be really helpful we're not trying to drag crews right as far yeah but we just have a you know a person or two in the truck and trailer yeah. getting out from a couple different hubs and yeah. we can cover a lot of territory well, that, that, o- that might also help the business model with if you do a community build and somebody says wow this is great i'd love to be a regional rep for you you know and then all of a sudden you can you know expand that way as well so please yeah. all of you whoever yeah. you are i want that so much yeah and absolutely i mean if, if people are interested definitely contact jeff because i'm there's things that you need to learn obviously in order to do this but it's not like you know somebody can't put up a couple of these with you and then be able to go out and you know do a crew with with their you know their absolutely and the way that this community build model works you can you you already intuited this obviously but there's so many of these little jumping off points so you come you know they can come out the first time and just jump on a crew like this then uh we can hire you know we can say well we'll 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 focus more on selling full installs out in your area and and we'll hire you to come in and be the crew on that so now you've transitioned from helping a guy out building a hoop to having it be a part-time gig where you're figuring it out and then when there's enough work out there um I can come out, uh, you know, as if I'm doing community builds, right. work with that crew. It's really their job. They right. can sell the job. They can, um, you know, get paid all that labor right. that's above whatever I'm charging. Right. And then eventually I drop down what, you know, it, if they're getting pretty good, I can just put that five hours in with them. Yeah. Eventually, I, if they have all the tools that they need and everything, yeah. I, I drive up, drop off the steel and off they go. Yeah. And we even start to ship, you know, stuff out, uh, you know, like a semi truck at a time yeah. or something so every one of those steps is a pretty natural transition and there's enough money in it to make it worth somebody's while at yeah. each of those steps too so yeah. we're working on that <laughs> we're very eager for it to get to that level yeah and you guys help out so after the sale you guys i know you um you said tom one of your employees has um, been helping out as well with consulting uh you're there for the purchaser after you know so the hoop the hoop house is done the high tunnel is done it's not like I'm never going to see you again. If I if I have questions, I know where to come to, and you've got a lot of that information uh, because you've been in this industry for years and years. Yeah, well, you mentioned Tom, and Tom was farming just down the road here for about 10 years and has a lot of experience before even having his uh, Sunseed farm here in town. Um, we don't end up actually doing that much of like a paid consulting right. work. Tom, I was feeding some of that to Tom before he even came and started working with me at Nifty Hoops, and he was doing that for some people, and it was really helpful. We find that most of the people that we build for have a certain amount of sophistication and and know what they plan to do with it, and there's a lot of that information out there from other sources. There's some really good programs that you can buy at this point. Um, uh, You know, $1,000, $1,500, you pay for this lifetime program, and you're kind of in somebody's camp. Um, there's a couple of them that, that we could talk about where that, that you, you're in kind of a network of a bunch of growers, you're learning yeah. their systems, and there's a lot of hand-holding there for people that want something like yeah. that. Um, but we end up giving, a, giving away basically a lot of just yeah. kind of you call up, and he's got a planning schedule that can kind of help you figure out row spacing and good time to put in different crops, yeah. and he's glad to share that. But, you know, it's there if people want it. We, we can also... Uh, do a bit of paid consulting for people if they need it too. Very cool. Is there anything else you'd like prospective um, customers to know about your product, about your company, about your employees? I have to say, like Jess was great. You know, <laughs> um, people who are watching this video will have seen her on the you know the install video. Um, she was outstanding. So if she is indicative of the rest of your employees, you're doing something right, and when you're hiring people. Well, this is kind of brutal work for employees, so we end up with a little bit of a seasonal yeah. transition. I'll tend to have an amazing crew and even bring them through kind of a slow winter, 
and then you know spring comes along and they see what's coming and it's like i might just find something that's a little less brutal because yeah. we travel a lot and we work hard when yeah. we're out there uh for some reason i seem to be able to still hold up mm -hmm. against this and i love coming out and doing it when yeah. i can um but yeah the crews are amazing and um uh what else would i say i don't know yeah. um i think i think that we're we're just really fired up to continue to be a part of this and i love all the ways that we we find you know that plug in with other people's communities and figuring out what they're doing i think we're right now with covid we're seeing just this real mix up in the way that food uh production and distribution is going to go but what's really obvious to me is that these things are going to prove to be valuable in every phase of the food system yeah. and so um yeah, I'm just all in on hoop houses and uh, just really glad to find people that are figuring that out and using them. And, you know, one of these things really is, is about a half time equivalent of a job. Every time I go out and build a hoop house, we have a certain amount of labor that we're doing. Our workers putting this up, but it's creating a livelihood. It's yeah. creating a way that we can grow food in our local communities. It doesn't have to be brought in from California and Mexico that we know is here. We don't have to worry about the trucks showing up. Yeah. You know, we've messed up about everything there is to mess up. Absolutely. And, and we haven't really messed up food yet. We haven't got yeah. to where people are standing out in lines, but boy, it wouldn't be hard right. to find something where we mess that up. And you know, the more we can have this regional, distributed, localized four season food system, it's yeah. something I, I like to be on that side of history. So Absolutely. I'm, I'm thrilled to do it. And a couple of the people who are here today, um, you know, were saying, hey, this would be too big for their house, their location, their land. You guys do all sorts of different sizes of hoop houses. Yeah, this is kind tunnels. of like the middle of the road, I'd say, or, yeah. you know, the kind of standard or something these days. Yeah. NRCS is funding yep. about $8,000 on one of these things. If yep. you're patient and go through that process, which, which I, I know did, you yep. did. Um, that helps a lot yeah. that they kind of max out in Michigan different states have different limits yeah. on, on where they stop funding um, so we end up building this a lot we yeah. can build this up to about three times as long right but what you're talking about yeah we can go down to it it's almost identical to look at the looking as this is but shrunk down to 22 and a half foot wide yep. instead of 30 foot wide like this one is yeah and then we have a 14 foot uh, wide uh, just a round top Quonset structure that yeah. we build as well. So yeah, we try to have something that scales to everybody's needs. Absolutely. Well, I can't thank you enough for coming out. This was a lot of fun. And you said you still are holding up to doing it. Um, it tell it, it shows you could, you were having fun doing this. We were getting work done, uh, but it was a fun, you know, nobody was, it wasn't a slog. It was a lot of fun. So if anybody who's watching this has an opportunity to do a community build with Jeff, uh, I highly, highly recommend it. So thank you so much for coming out. I really uh, appreciate it. I so, so appreciate you. Thank you.